Hi, I'm recording this video for my GCSE and A-level electronics students and I've got two similar but different circuits here. Both of them driving seven segment displays and I don't know how well you can see this but this display is much, much brighter than this one. Okay, now in this video I want to explain what the difference is, why this one is brighter and why this one might be the preferable circuit. And you might, uh, if you're curious, just like to note that this one's got a 4026 decades uh, counter and it also does the seven segment driving. And this one, it has the same thing, the 4026, but then it's got this thing, which is a ULN 2803 Darlington driver and it's got current and transistors. So curious that, isn't it? This one's got current and transistors, it's brighter. This one has no current and two resistors, which is a bit odd for an LED circuit, and it's duller. The one which was not so bright was this circuit. And as you can see, uh, 4026B driver uh, interface directly with the seven segment display. No current and two resistors. If you scroll on down, uh, this is the circuit which was brighter. This is actually my preferred circuit. So we've got a 4026. And then we've got these. These all come in one package, actually. It's a ULN 2803. And we've got current and transistors, and we've got a display. Notice this is a common analog display. More about that in a bit. And this one is a common cathode display. So let's first of all have a look at this circuit and think about why this one might not be quite what you would like to use. Or it might be what you want to use, but you just have to understand the limitations. Firstly, it's generally, no, not generally, it's pretty much always a good idea to include a current emitting resistor to an LED. Okay, you need to connect the current. Uh, in this particular case, this is a logic chip. It comes from the um, 4000 series CMOS chips, and they're very poor at providing much uh, current. So they, they can source very little current, and they can also sink very little current too. Okay. Um, as soon as we put any load on them, in this case it's an LED or each one of these segments is an LED, the voltage will drop and the current will be something like about 1 milliamp, assuming that the supply is uh, about 5 volts. Now, if you're using Circuit Wizard, if you go on to Project Simulation and we go on to Power Supply, you'll actually see that it's included a hidden uh, power supply of 5 volts. Okay, so that's it. Um, it doesn't show it here, but that has a 5 volt supply. If we were to actually run the simulation and we were to put a voltage probe, let's stick a voltage probe on there on segment A, you'll notice that segment A goes between, well currently it's probably about one volt or something, and then it drops down to zero volts and then one volt, okay? So not the sort of five volts that you might expect if you've got a five volt supply. But the reason for that is because we've got a load on it. Now, if we um, pull this over to here, and by the way, this is just the same chip, same voltage supply, but all of the outputs are just open circuits, so there's no load on them. You'll notice we have uh, a higher voltage here, and yeah, sure enough, we've got about five volts or zero volts. Okay, so that's possibly what you're expecting with the circuit. You know, bearing in mind five volt supply, you probably thought that this IC was going to output five volts, but it doesn't as soon as there's a load on it. Um, as a consequence of which, it's limitation on not being able to provide much current. You can actually make use of that by saying, well, I don't need a current emitting resistor. However, uh, because you have no control then over the current, uh, then it's actually, uh, well, very dull, as maybe you saw earlier. So this circuit, which uh, this next one further on down, this one here, uh, this one which has got current limiting resistors, these current limiting resistors are probably not necessary if you're supplying just 5 volts to your 4026 CMOS IC. However, if you were supplying a higher voltage, and bearing in mind that you can, I think the maximum for these is 20 volts, then uh, if you were to increase the voltage to supply to this chip, then you might need current limiting resistors. But that's probably still not the way to go because they're not really designed to drive loads. So the better way to get it to light up an LED or the segments, the LED segments in the seven segment display is actually to use some form of driver. So in this particular example here, one which I haven't read really because it's just a little bit messy and complicated, uh, we've got 
a transistor drive each one of the segments. Okay, so yeah, that works. Uh, that would work very well. No problem with that. Uh, because the base resistors are relatively high values, 10K, then we won't be loading the outputs A2G very much. So those voltages uh, shouldn't drop too much. Let's just drag this further on down. And let's just see. It's still not a circuit I'm necessarily advocating, but we can have a look at it anyway. Yeah, you'll notice that those voltages are going from zero, the logic line, to a highish voltage of, let's see, um, 4.6 volts. So that's, yeah, not much in voltage drop. And also, similarly, not much current. If you actually have a look at the current flow, very, very modest amount of current flowing in here and a much greater current flowing in here. Uh, and that current is going to be limited by the current limiting resistors. So we have more control over the current. You'll notice the direction of the current here. This is no longer a common cathode display. This is what we call a common anode display. So the supply voltage, the positive supply voltage is going in the common anode. Whereas when we use this one, this is a common cathode. So all of the cathodes of each segment are common together or joined together. OK, so these do require a different type of display. Now, let's just go back to normal view. It's a little bit easier to view, I think. And if you scroll on down, so this one was OK. I mean, in fact, this one's quite good. Uh, however, you need those base resistors. If you don't want to use those separate transistors, then what you can do is you can use a package like the ULM2800. Three, which is a Darlington array. I don't want to get into too much detail about that, but the Darlington array allows you to do pretty much the same thing as a transistor circuit, but in one integrated circuit. So if I just uh, pull this back over, so this is my Darlington array. Okay, so each one of these wires here is the output from the uh, decade counter, which then goes to the inputs of the Darlington array, and then the uh, those outputs then are then connected to those uh, current limiting resistors for each one of the segments. So it makes for a relatively neat circuit. If you look at the logic diagram for this, you'll see that each one of the inputs to Darlington Array operates something similar. It's not exactly the same, but something similar to a NOT gate. So when you have segment A goes to a logic high, then this is going to go to a logic low. And then remember, the current's going to flow here. So it's actually going to flow into that output. OK, if that makes some sense. Now, these outputs are actually what we call common collectors. Uh, I don't want to make this too technical a video, but you'll see that from the data sheet, you'll actually see that those outputs are actually really the collectors of transistors. And there's a pair of transistors here because they're working as a Darlington pair. So if you want to just come away with a single, a simple recommendation. I would say if you've got a five volt supply and you're not bothered about the brightness of each segment and you want to risk it, then you could do this one uh, without current limiting resistors. If you go above five volts, you may need current limiting resistors. But uh, if you decide to go above five volts and you want a nice bright display, then it would be much more sensible. Uh, to use this and in fact you can still use this if you're just on five volts and then you'll get a nice consistent bright display and also you're not limited to just using a small seven segment display you'll be able to drive something a bit uh, larger too okay uh, hope that's useful for my students and possibly a few other people besides thanks for watching